Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be checking out another one of your guys' solar systems. So today's system is from the user back end in Discord so massive thank you to them for sending their system but without further ado let's get into this. So their system is called the Polis system. They had quite a cool custom thumbnail for it actually. Let's go ahead and uh, check it out. There it is. Looking pretty cool so let's see what they have prepared for us. Okay right. The Polis system by back end. Hello and welcome to the system. I work quite a bit on this system, so I do hope you enjoy it, but please do some constructive criticism as well. Okie dokie. How are we looking? Oh, okay. Awesome. Before we start, quick note, I got too used to the generated names for all of the planets in the polis, apart from the gas giants have generated names and moons that do not have descriptions, but all including moons have been customised. Very nice. To be honest, I don't mind the uh, regular names because they're easier to say. <laughs> so, there you go. Uh, this system contains 16 planets across two stars, with 12 of the planets being part of the polis side of the system. Uh, there are also dwarf planets in both systems across three belts, rip PCs. But it's time for me to stop yapping and actually get on with the system. So let's get on to the first object. Okay, so the inner Pollux. Oh, so it's Pol is it Pollux or Pollux? Pollux, I guess we'll go because that's the actual star's name in the game. Okay, so we have Pollux itself, also known as NSV S1425682 5A or NSVS. Okay. It's an F-type star, two times the radius and mass of the sun, which is in a binary orbit with the second star. Okay, so we've got a further one out there somewhere as well. There it is. Okay. Ooh, what's that unknown? Ooh, hoo, hoo. Okay. First of the planets. This looks like it's the one from the thumb, though, actually. Synax is a scorching hot super-Earth that orbits close to the Mercury. It is primarily a red colour. Very nice. Okay. Next up, we've got Mancon. A scorching hot dark purple object that orbits Polis every 68.8 days. Okay, so it orbits quicker than Mercury orbits our sun. We've got Aiken here. Looks like it has a breathable atmosphere, but don't let that deceive you. Its atmosphere is one of the most toxic compounds in the universe, to the point where scientists don't even know why it's so toxic to them. Okay, looking good. Do quite a lot of that one looks, actually. Very nice. Next up, we've got the middle system. So we've got this one here. Sire Pydanax. It's the largest terrestrial object in the, of the system. 2.3 times size of the Earth and has carbon dioxide clouds. Very nice. Looking good. Let's turn that off. Has a moon as well. Let's have a quick look at you. There it is. Nice. Next up we've got Yumpest. Looking good. It's a hot desert planet with it being 55 degrees on average. It has two moons. Awesome. There's the moons there as well. Okie dokie. Got some pretty extreme names there. There's the other moon. Okay, cool. It's moving on to Quir Tree over here. It's home to alien life, with purple being the only visual colour in there and our visible spectrum, giving it its purple look. I like that. It looks good, doesn't it? Yeah, all purple city lights as well. Very nice. And we got Pranga over here. Moon of it. Looking good. Then we got Lapron over here. It's a planet that will soon be as hustable as a, the previous planet, uh, but its star is not bright enough yet. Those aliens also colonize this, but it's not too much since it's too cold. So there you go. Looking good. There's the second one. We've got Bonk. <laughs> So there you go. Uh, next up we've got Janat over here. Janet is a planet for large mountainous terrain with a mixture of mostly ice and some water near the poles. Looking good. Okay. Then we have uh, Vailu. Valu. It's the largest in radius in the middle part of the system. It is a gas dwarf. Alrighty. Very nice. We've got this one over here as well. Looking good. Okay. we got uh, some nice second moon as well. Cool. Right, so now we have the Vinastra belt. So we've got Vinastra itself. The first object it discovered in the belt, known for its grey and purple look. Cool. Then we have a uh, Sinidu, which is the second. A deep orange object near the edge of the belt. Okay. Looking good. Okay. 
Now we're moving on to the outer solar system here. So we've got Lilla. Looks like it's going to be a dominant gas giant, probably. Oh, yeah, dominant gas giant with a mass um, and radius larger than Jupiter. It is believed to have formed due to a low speed three way collision causing its five distinct bangs. It has a total of 278 moons, but since I don't want my mind to explode, um, I don't have the time. I included the 15 major moons. I don't blame you. It's a lot of stuff. All right, so here we go. Looking good. Okay, we'll quickly go through all of them all. Very nice. So we've got Bula here. We've got Buse. Nice. This one here. Looking good. Okay, let's uh, go over here. Get the menu up. Yeah, quicker navigation. So there are quite dark moons, a lot of these. There you go. We've got the green moon here. Merku. I like it. Here you go. Like a green titan like world. <laughs> Got Bato over here, another green world. Makalor. Daku. That one's a very titan like, isn't it? Got the atmosphere on it as well, I'm guessing. Yeah, oh yeah. Nice. We got these guys as well. Cool. And the last major moon over here. With a purple and orange clouded world. Okay. Quite like that one actually, it looks good. Right, next up, what we got over here? We got Igazi. Ooh, I like the way this looks. Ah! You may remember this object from the Halloween object competition, and you would be right. This object was used for the Halloween object competition. It's a dark red gas giant situated in the outer solar system, depicted as hell to the aliens over in um, Quinnert Tree. It has 158 halter moons, 9 major moons, 149 minor moons. That's a lot of moons. So there it is, looking good. Good to see a competition object in here as so well. That's pretty awesome. So the moons, I'm guessing they're all very red and menacing. Looks like it. Not every single one. Oh yeah, very spooky. How did the formation of this system happen with these guys? Lots of red. Corrupted. Hey, I like that. Cool theme. Next up we've got a nice blue world here. What's this? Got the dark spot effect as well. A large ice giant with slightly more mass than Saturn. It has 45 moons in total, 6 major moons in orbits at 50.2 AU. Being 410 in orbital resonance with Vigazi, its moons are based off Uranus and Neptune's moons. Looking good. Okay. Let's go on to the moons as well. And here they are. Awesome. So, there we go. Oh, more generic moons, kind of like Uranus's moons in theory. We've got Tritus here, which is probably a take on Triton. But looking good, I like it. Very, very nice indeed. Okay. Right, so now we have the Trans Icy Belt. So, we're getting to the far out stuff now. We've got a barrier center here with two objects by the looks of things. What's going on here? So we've got Pryo, Vustin, and Horton, a binary uh, trans icy object. Kind of like our system, so you know, it's consisting of a um, Pryo, Vustin, Protect Horton, actually, and Follins, an ingredient of life and smaller grey rock, and with a higher concentration of Follins named Horton after it's discovered. So the Follins are the brownish stuff on the surface, kind of like Pluto has, and supposedly Sedna, given it its red colours. So there you go. We've also got some, I'm guessing these are minor moons, kind of like, this is effectively based off Pluto's uh, system of the binary there. Pretty cool. We got Sonvir. I'm guessing these are all lone objects. No, they got they got moons as well. Okay. So they all are there. So this is a just an icy rock. Next up we've got Dustin. Over here. Looking good. It's a cold desert planet and has light dust storms. It has seven moons, a lot considering it's only 600 kilometers in radius, but they're all actual asteroid moons. So there you go. Looking good. Nice. Next up, we've got Mass. Over here. It's a cold desert planet for tinted light green. It has 12 moons in total and is the third largest dwarf planet. So again. Really simple structure as the other ones. So there you go. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Yep. So all, all different coloured asteroids. There you go. 
Then we have Dysis, which is this one. Um, it is the most massive dwarf planet, but it is also the second largest. Similar to Eris, it has the second darkest surface after Pharaoh. So it's always very dark, isn't it? So we've got these guys here as well. Nice. So now we have Valor over here. Pale rock with a dusty atmosphere. It has the same orbit in a one-to-one -one orbital resonance and has a lower eccentricity. So there you go. So now it's all the same generic moons. Okay. Cool. Right, now we have uh, Ami over here. It's an icy rock similar to that, but more prominent blue colour. Okay, we're so far from the start at this point that there is no light even reaching here. And then we have the final one, which is this one here. The blue one. So what is this? Uh, it's a dark blue rock covered with slippery ice sheets. There he is. It's all alone. Okay. Right, so now we have the B star. So all the way over here. The red dwarf orbits in Polis. It has four planets and one dwarf planet. It only has one name, this one, okay. So we have a uh, Jeddin here. Pretty large planet uh, orbiting um, 1.5 or 1.57 days and a 10-4 orbital resonance with a spin of its host star. It has no moons. It's pretty hot as well. We've got Dua here. A hot desert planet with white and brown sand. The brown sand probably came from a collision with another object. Ooh. Then we have Trizzy, Trizzy here. Ooh, this, oh, it says it's got water on one side and then it's scorched here. Uh, hey. It was a hatal planet until a coronal mass injection happened. It stripped away its atmosphere, killing all vegetation on the planet with harmful radiation, killing most, if not all, of life. It effectively became a desolate wasteland of its former self. The clouds are still present, but not for long. It has a 1 2 orbital resonance with the host of the star's spin. That's a pretty cool one. Look, scorched, and then it has still has the water on the other side. Have a look at that. 21 degrees on the other side. Oh, yeah. Not where you want to be. Let me have this one here. The largest planet of this part of the system, the second largest terrestrial planet of the whole system, has a toxic dark green surface with clumps of dust floating in the air. It has a 1 5 resonance. Okay. Then we have the Nursey Belt. That's a moon as well. There's the belt. Got Nursey itself. A small dwarf planet in the Nursey Belt. It's a cold desert object with no prominent yellow surface. Has no moons. Right, and then over here. So we go to the unknown, the brown dwarf. Right, hello. Oh, it's in a binary or something. A large, so I say, uh, I'll just be calling them object due to all being labelled as unknown. A large but pretty cold brown dwarf around 46 Jupiter's mass has a few of its orbits in it. The round dwarf is pretty much the closest point to the two stars and will fly away due to its speed being too high, meaning it will not stay in the system. So it's just flying by. Okay. So we've got object one, a small brown rock comparable to the size of Mars. Let's go on. Uh, do this. Close that quickly. Studio. Uh, object two, a pale green object with a mostly barren appearance. Uh, that's the one in the binary by the looks of it. <laughs> We've got object three. An earth sized ice planet will cry volcanoes and large cracks along its surface outlined by a darker blue colour. So it's kind of like Europa. There you go. Object four. A large cratered world with a thin layer of ice and fallings about the size of Mars. Looking good. And then object six. A very large orange desert planet that was captured by the brown dwarf in deep space. It now has a stable orbit with the other objects in the system. It's the only object of the brown dwarf system that has moons due to the other objects orbiting close to the star. Is that object 6? Where are the moons? I don't see the moons. Am I looking at the wrong one? Uh, let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's object 5. Oh. So it's object 6 then. Aha! Here we go. There's one behind. <laughs> So this is the one on the moons. There it is. Yes, I said that other one wasn't very orange. So there you are. There's the moons. The unknown. Nice. Thank you for looking at the system and subscribe to the Guy. He's a cool guy. Ah, thank you. Glad you like it. <laughs> hey, have a nice day. Awesome, you too. Cool. So there we go. That does it for this system. So let's get our full lineup here. So I oh, see the. The second star is not that large. You can see the planet's almost the size. You've got the brown dwarf. I did like the Halloween and the blue object, I think, the most. I did like the little gas dwarf as well. That's pretty cool. 
Rockies. I really did like the way this one looked, actually. The purple one where they only see purple. That was quite cool. Here is the rest of the lineup. I have to say, I think the dwarf planets were all very similar. I think that would be my feedback is there was they're all just kind of the same thing, just the odd dwarf planet in a different colour. It felt a bit copy pasted to me. I mean, there, there's some honest feedback um for you there. But um there we go. It's very colourful. All the little uh, dwarfs there, and there's the asteroids as well. Very, very nice indeed. But yeah, go. With that all said and done, everyone, that does it for the polis systems. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did. Make sure to hit that like button. Let's see if we can go for 100 likes on today's video as well. Subscribe for more. Helps us journey to 50,000 subscribers. Again, a massive thank you to the creator of this system back end for sending this in. And that all said and done. Make sure you guys all have a great day out there. Stay safe. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.